Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about Faraday efficiency and how it's different than a traditional um, yield that you talk about in general chemistry or uh, organic chemistry, for example. So um, let's use the example of CO2 reduction. So in CO2 reduction, uh, you can reduce CO2 to many different products. Uh, one example is you can reduce it to carbon monoxide. Um, and then you go to water. So you can see this is a balanced equation. We have a carbon and a carbon on each side. We have, it's a half reaction, right? We have uh, two oxygens and two hydrogens on both sides. Uh, and then this is charge balanced. They're, they're both neutral on each side. So this is one of the different products that we can get. We can also get um, you know, ethanol, methanol, uh, ethane, uh, methane, lots of, lots of other different products, formic acid. But, so this is one where, uh, definitely people talk about, researchers talk about Faraday efficiency all the time because they care about selectivity. Let's say, you know, you're really focusing on CO and so you want to get 100% Faraday efficiency for CO. So this is on, uh, Faraday efficiency is on an electron basis, right? So it's saying, hey, if we have one mole, or two moles of uh, electrons being transferred, however much charge that is, well, it's two times Faraday's constant, Right? But if we have two moles of electrons being consumed in our electric chemistry, we better get one mole of CO being generated. That's what's saying according to the PF balance reaction. But when you talk about this in terms of general yield, okay, percent yield that we normally talk about outside of electric chemistry, you'd be thinking about it in terms of CO2, the reactant, or in terms of the protons. Okay. Um, Whatever is the limiting reactant, that's how you would determine the yield. But when we talk about Faraday efficiency, the limiting, where there's no limiting reactant that we're thinking about, we're just thinking about in terms of electrons, okay? So the result is that it can get into some trickery when the results are presented. You can have 100% Faraday efficiency for CO, and just report that, and that would look great. But you can have a terrible 0.1% actual yield in a traditional sense of CO. What do I mean by that is you could have a um, hundred, a thousand pounds of CO2 reactive went through your reactor, right? And you only get um well, wow, that's a bad idea, bad example. You need to be in moles because they're different ways. A uh, thousand moles of CO2 reactive and only get one mole of CO form. That would be um, an example of, and if, if this was your limited reactant, let's say you're having lots of that acid, right? That would be a 0.1% actual yield. And in fact, for a lot of these, gas phase reactions that are studied in electrochemistry, we all, uh, typical electrochemists will flood it with gases because we're really interested as a first pass to getting this system working and understanding how the catalysis works. We wanna flood it with lots of gas and lots of acid and just focus on what's happening electrochemically, get that yield high. And so the actual yield will oftentimes be atrocious. Definitely in our lab, um, they, they, they are. Uh, because we're focusing on this Faraday efficiency. But, you know, it's important to think about still, what is actually this? This yield, you know, you'll have to fix with engineering. Recirculating re the CO2, not putting in so much CO2, um, high pressure reactions, high surface area electrodes, um, those types of things. So definitely important to know the difference between Faraday efficiency and actual uh, yield in terms of limiting reactant and being able to do both calculations.